What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup. You were watching the Tom O'Brien Show. Let's take a look what we got going on in the market today. I hope you all are having a good day. Obviously, uh, some pretty interesting stuff with earnings coming out. Of course, you had Google. They did very well. Eli Lilly did not. We are definitely going to be talking about Eli Lilly and uh, my, my favorite uh, of hymns to go along with Eli Lilly. Let's take a little bit of a look right now. We got going on. We have the composite off about 0.28%. Yeah, the Dow Jones Industrial off about 0.03%. The dollar, okay. The dollar was showing a little bit of sign of weakness. Not really, though, right? We're trading in that upper 104 region. We broke down below the 104 level to 103, uh, roughly 98. We're trading back at 104.05. You had some people talking in on the YouTube chat about the potential for this dollar to kind of, you know, roll over a little bit and then send gold a little bit higher. So definitely, I would say this gold contract has been so unbelievably strong. I mean, we're making all-time highs again today, up 0.64%, trading right under that 2,800 mark, made it at a 2,801 and 80 cents uh, for an all-time high there. Definitely, if that dollar breaks down, you get gold going up. But here's the thing. I mean, this dollar is going to stay strong, right? So... You have some issues with a depreciation of, you know, the Canadian dollar against the DXY. And then you have some major issues going on in Europe. I know I've been kind of saying that the past few days, but that really is what you're seeing is a, is a big flight to dollar. And then I would assume also gold as well, uh, especially in countries, you know, like Asia. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> Asia is not a country. In uh, countries like China, but in Asia, uh, more broadly speaking. You have copper up about uh, or off about 0.02%. Those NQs off about point. 5-4% to Russell Futures, up about 024 and then uh, silver is actually trading down. So a little bit of a divergence right now between the gold contract uh, and silver. You lose Dow Futures a little bit sideways. You have rates going up today, of course. Um, let's see what else. It's kind of just a strange day. You have a lot of things kind of off. You have Google soaring, uh, you know, really based on kind of their, uh, their earnings report and their investments in AI. Uh, Lucid's off quite a bit today. Anything else kind of important? Not not necessarily. So first, and Apple's off a little bit. Uh, first things first, I really do want to talk about Lily. Uh, so you are off off about seven point eight two percent. They cut guidance um, and they just didn't do as well. Uh, so let's take a look at that a little bit. Uh, they expect a full uh, year adjusted earnings between thirteen oh two. Um, in 1352, that is down from previous guidance of 1610 to 1660. That is pretty intense. The drug maker cited a 2.8 billion charge recorded during the third quarter and related to its acquisition of bowel disease drug maker Morphic Holdings. Lowered the high end of its revenue outlook for the year and now expects sales between 45.4 billion and 46. The company's previous guidance calls for revenue of 46.6. And then they had an EPS of $1.18 versus the $147 expected and revenue of 11.4, 12.11. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about this, right? So I had seen some headlines that were saying it's because there's a decrease in demand for their terzepatide compounds, which are the GLP-1, obviously the anti-obesity drug, um, also used, uh, <laughs> well, supposed to be used, in uh, diabetes treatment. It, I'm not so sure, right? And I read the earnings report, we're gonna pull it over a little bit just to read, that there really is less of a demand. It seemed what happened is that they kind of oversold at least to wholesalers in Q2, right? They had the supply come back. Of course, they were on the FDA shortage list. They were able to make enough at some certain point, they were able to sell that. And it seems like the wholesalers were using things from Q2, uh, supply from Q2, into Q3. I don't know if that necessarily indicates that you're having a, a demand issue with it, right? It, it might have been miscalculated, but I still think the demand is, is massive there. And I think this is what a lot of this kind of conversation is rolling about on, and this is going to tie into hymns. Uh, but I'm taking a look at this here. This is, you know, the earnings report that they were, uh, excuse me, posted. So it says in here that the wholesalers just didn't buy as much, right? It didn't say that the demand was less for it. So here it goes. Following higher wholesaler inventory levels at the end of Q2, Manjaro and Zeppend 
sales in Q3 were negatively impacted by inventory decreases in the wholesaler channel. That can be due to any number of things. Driven by a, th this revenue increase of 46% is driven by a 35% increase in volume and obviously 11% increase in realized prices on that volume. Majority driven, at least in the US, of Zip and, uh, Zipbound and Majaro. They are going to start advertising as well. So it seems in some capacity they think there might be, um, you know, I would, I would say some supply issue or, excuse me, demand issue. But I don't think it has so much to do with the GLP-1 drugs more than it just has to do with competitive GLP-1 drugs. They also stated that they were going to go after these compounders, right? And we've spoken about this at length, but I think it's worth kind of pulling in again. So with that kind of news, you have hymns falling off, right? And we're down 14.25% on light volume. We're breaking through that gap point um, on less volume than the gap, but you still have some high volume in the greens. My thought on this is that we're seeing another dip opportunity in hymns, okay? And this is just my opinion. Of course, I always going to tell you, you need to do uh, your own due diligence on this. Hims does not compound terzepatide. They do semaglutide, which is Novo Nordisk. That is still on the shortage list. They're still gonna be able to compound that as they are now. And then even in the event that semaglutide gets off the FDA shortage list, they're still gonna be able to compound it as long as there is a personalized note from a doctor. So they can still be in that game. The, the demand for these GLP-1 drugs is, is vast, right? And we haven't even seen Hims report revenue on that yet. Um, so, you know, it, in my head, I'm looking at this as a potential, you know, buy the dip kind of thing, at least in hymns. It's not related to Eli Lilly. The only reason I could see him selling off in a major way is if there actually were a true demand issue with GLP-1 drugs. And I just don't, I don't really see that, I guess, right? And I, and I don't necessarily think that this circumstance here is indicative of a wider spread kind of issue with GLP-1 demand. That's my thoughts on it. Uh, do your own research on it, but I'm, I'm gonna look to see what this does kind of tomorrow, and uh, you know maybe we can get a really hot balance going on him because that's what happened um, last month, and made some okay profit on that. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back.